It's good to see you. Today on today, today's today, is what we're going to do is... <laughs> I'm sorry, can you believe I write out scripts for this and everything and I still come up with intros like that? Anyway, the plan. We're going to refactor the tiny, tiniest little bit. And then we're going to connect. We made that roller to see who goes first. We're going to connect that and make it actually work in the game. But Foist, if you've got code and you see it repeated in several places, it's usually a good idea to pull that out and make it its own function. And we have this a few times. So I'm going to copy if pink piece turn, piece equals pink piece, else piece equals blue to piece. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to just make myself a new little function. Thunk, I'm going to call it whose turn is it parentheses colon. Did I put, I sure did put two spaces in there. That looks so suspicious. And this is going to be the whole thing. So now we have the fun task of going through our code. And every single time we find this, we're going to delete. We're going to call whose turn is it. So we've got that in funk input. We've got it right here on dice. Dice has rolled. Hello. I think there's one other. That's not it. That looks suspiciously like it, but that's not it. Ooh, that looks suspiciously like it, but that's not it. That's not it. Okay, we've done it. That's actually going to help us later when we hook up the roll for first. So that's good to get that done. I can, I can see spots where maybe potentially this could be refactored further, but I'm not going to do it and let me defend that choice. When you make games, particularly large games, Best practices is to have the code divided up between, in Godot, it would be called nodes. If we were working in Unity, it would be called objects in between your little guys as much as humanly possible. So I could see an argument for saying that all of the spots in here, for example, could maybe handle, uh, where is it? This right here, maybe, or maybe the pieces themselves could figure out what they're on. Possibly. And, well, why do you divide code up? Because large chunks of code take longer to run. Small chunks of code run faster. I don't think this entire program is more than 250 lines. This is not that large. This is, this is a tiny bit of a large main.gd, but it's not entirely enormous. And let me prove something else to you. I'm just going to run the game. Boop, boop, boop. And if I come in here to the debugger, you've got the profiler right here. And this thing can do all kinds of stuff that I barely understand, I'll be honest with you. It's really great if your game's running super slow to go into the profiler and be like, all right, who's leaking memory? But our game right now is running at 143, 142 FPS. Yeah, the PS5 could never. So I feel okay about this being optimized enough and running well enough for us to just kind of leave it alone. Also, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You want to know a fun story about dividing your code up? Have you ever played Celeste? You know, the little pixel art game for, it's on Switch. It's probably on everything. But that game initially was one script, only one. See how we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. The person who programmed Celeste had to divide it up into two scripts because it was taking like five minutes to boot. So Celeste is two scripts. We've, we're doing better than Celeste, so let's just move on. Last time we made roll for first, let's instance it. I want it to be um, a child of canvas layer because it is UI. I'm going to click the little chain to instance. And I gotta find it. Roll for first. Love that. It's right there. And I'm gonna leave it visible because I do want it to be like up on the screen first. 
So what should happen is I boot the game. It's like, oh, who goes first? I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I click, it rolls, it says blue piece, pink piece, and it sends that to Maine. And then Maine now knows who gets to move first. How do we get that information up? Who said signal? Good for you. You call down, but you signal up. So let's go into the script for roll for first. Let's declare far. I don't think it needs to be on ready. Pink piece turn and make it a bull. Because it's either the pink piece's turn or the blue piece's turn, right? Like a hundred episodes ago, we did the event bus. We're going to do that again. So go to events.gd. Because we've got a signal that kind of got has to shoot up through the tree. So it's a good use of this. And we're going to declare signal send piece. And I want to send what piece? So piece. Nailed it. Love that. Where are you mad? Ah, you just hadn't caught up with me. Perfect. Let's think through. We click. We start this. It comes up with either I am the pink piece or I am the blue piece and then we start the go away timer so if it's here if it's pink piece this is obviously true right but if it's here it's a blue piece so this has got to be false and then once i figured out it's true or false it's one or the other we've got to send it events dot because we've got to talk to events to get the signal ah godot knows what i want Wait a minute. That's not what I want. <laughs> Kado lied. I have to emit the signal. Now it knows what I want. Send piece. Comma. And we're going to send pink piece turn. Whatever it got set to is going to get sent to whatever receives the signal. Let's make main receive the signal. Go to main.gd. Ready? I am going to delete this line that says pink, or no, piece equals pink piece, bye bye And I'm going to connect to that signal. And if you don't know how to do that, you just have to copy this. It's not that serious. Dot, this is send piece that we're connecting to. Dot, connect. And we've got to make up a function name. May as well just call it on. Send piece. And it's going to complain because on send piece is not declared. Just real quick, I don't know if I've done this or not. When Godot names a function that collects a signal, it names it on something. Blah, 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 blah. Do we have another on something in this? There it is. On question. Well, no, I named that one. Here's how I know I named that one. Whenever Godot has a built in function or a function that it named, it always starts with an underscore. I can, like, it won't care. I can put an underscore there. Some people do, and they use that to kind of indicate to themselves that it's a signal receiving function. I like to save underscores for stuff Godot made up and not use underscores for things that I made up so I can keep that straight. But that's really just kind of your own personal preference. Let's actually write on send piece. So once you get the signal, I want you to run this. What do I want it to do? Oh, yeah. We did send the piece in here. So let's name this variable. So whatever roll for first decides to send, it's going to land here and get set to sent piece. We need pink piece turn to equal whatever sent piece is going to be. And then let's see if it's the pink piece. To, just kidding. We don't have to do that because we refactored at the beginning. We can just call whose turn is it. Should work. Want to see? See who goes first. 
Okay, the pink piece is going first, and it went. But did you see the dice roll? Okay, so we've got some work to do because this is kind of duty. Let's do this. Come to dice.gd. Let's start can click as false. Because at the beginning, I don't want you to click the dice. I want you to click the roll for first. And then main. On send piece. After that piece is sent, let's set dice dot can click to true. See how we like this. Click do 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 pink piece. It works. We haven't gotten blue piece yet. That makes me nervous. The solution stinks a little bit just because watch. See who goes first. Click me. I can roll. I can roll before pink piece goes away. We have not gotten blue piece yet. That's crazy. It's good though. We're going to fix it with a signal. Go back to events. I'm thinking roll for first needs to send to the dice or to main or to anybody whether or not stuff can click. So let's just use a signal. Let's declare it here in events. Can click. And it doesn't necessarily need to send a variable, so that's going to be fine. Go to roll for first. On go away timer time out. I want to emit the signal, but yeah, it's fine. You can click now. So events dot emit signal can click. Cool. We could have main receive. Yeah, I'm going to send it to dice though. In dice events dot can click. Please connect to this. Thank you. I'm in ready, by the way. On can click and then we've got to write that function funk on can click can click equals true let me go back to main i'm going to take out this because that feels like that's gonna mess with it so let's see what i broke I cannot click to roll. Love that. Click. Do, 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 do. Pink piece. I'm so freaked out that we haven't gotten blue. Hold on. Do, 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 do. I still can't click. Aha, I got blue and blue can't roll until it goes away. And blue's going. Look at that. Blue went first. Go blue. Now it's pink's turn. I think I still have rolls set to 20 for pink. <laughs> I think I do. All right. Well, pink's going. Oh, thank you for visiting me today. Um, you have an excellent one. Take it easy, and I'll see you next time. I think I'm going to just fade on this little piece.